Good afternoon. I invite you to join us in our prayer to our Mother of Perpetual Help. And if you're visiting with us, you may find the prayer inside the front cover of the maroon worship aid that's found in your pew. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Most holy and immaculate Virgin, and our Mother Mary, you are our perpetual help, our refuge, and our hope. Mother of perpetual help, confident of your powerful influence with God, obtain for us these graces. Let us pray as a community of faith. We call upon your most powerful name. Your very name inspires confidence and hope. May it always be on our lips, especially in times of temptation, times of sickness and sufferings, and at the hour of our death. Blessed Lady, beg your Son, Jesus, to strengthen us as we bear our burdens with love and patience, and to free us from our evil. May we follow the example of your Son, and through him, with him, and in him, commend ourselves to the care of God of mercy. For our Holy Father, Bishop, priests, deacons in Christ, consecrated religious and laity, we pray. For the unity of all God's people, we pray. For the peace of our world, we pray. For the sick and suffering, the poor and powerless, we pray. For the reverence and protection of all human life, we pray. For the generous response to God's call to the priesthood and religious life, we pray. For the eternal rest of our beloved dead, we pray. For our personal petitions through the prayers of our Mother of Perpetual Help. We pray. In thanksgiving for all God's graces, we pray. In thanksgiving to God for the sacramental life of the church, we pray. In thanksgiving to God for all of our spiritual and material blessings, We pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. May the Lord Jesus Christ be with you that he may defend you, within you that he may sustain you, before you that he may lead you, behind you that he may protect you, above you that he may bless you, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let us go in peace to celebrate the holy sacrifice of the Mass.
Good afternoon. We welcome all to our historic Cathedral Basilica. Visitors and newcomers are asked to kindly fill out our special welcome envelope found in your pew. Please place your completed envelope in today's collection basket. God's holy word calls us to be filled with and to fill others with God's love. Today's second collection is a donation for the poor. Please be generous in helping those less fortunate in our area. The flu season has arrived, and we have posted our annual temporary flu precautions. We invite you to introduce yourself to those seated around you in an appropriate manner without shaking hands, and to refrain from shaking hands throughout Mass. Holy Communion will be distributed under one form, the Body of Christ. You are also invited to fully participate in the music of today's liturgy by singing from our hymnal and its inserted green music sheet. Our opening hymn this afternoon is Glory and Praise to Our God, which can be found on page number 537. Please stand and join in song. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. As we have come to worship the Lord on this second Saturday of the ordinary time, let us take a moment to repent. Repent on all our sins and ask the Lord for forgiveness and mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May the Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Thanks for your great 
Let us pray. God of wonders, at Cana in Galilee you revealed your glory in Jesus Christ and summoned all humanity to life in him. Show to your people gathered on this day your transforming power and give us a foretaste of the wine you keep for the age to come. We make our prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. For Zion's sake, I will not be silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not be quiet until her vindication shines forth like the dawn and her victory like a burning torch. Nations shall behold your vindication and all the kings your glory you shall be called by a new name, pronounced by the mouth of the Lord. You shall be a glorious crown in the land of the Lord, a royal diadem held by your God. No more shall people call you forsaken or your land desolate, but you shall be called my delight and your land espoused. For the Lord delights in you and makes your land his spouse. As a young man marries a virgin, your builder shall marry you. And as a bridegroom rejoices in his bride, so shall your God rejoice in you. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, there are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God who produces all of them in everyone. To each individual, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. To one is given through the Spirit the expression of wisdom. To another, the expression of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by one Spirit. To another, mighty deeds. To another, prophecy. To another, discernment of spirits. To another, varieties of tongues. To another, interpretation of tongues. But one and the same Spirit produces all of these, distributing them individually to each person as he wishes. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. There was a wedding at Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples were also invited to the wedding. When the wine ran short, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, how does your concern affect me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servers, Do whatever he tells you. Now there were six stone water jars there for Jewish ceremonial washings each holding 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus told them, fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, draw some out now and take it to the head waiter. So they took it. And when the head waiter tasted the water that had become wine, 
Without knowing where it came from, although the servers who had drawn the water knew, the head waiter called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves good wine first, and then when people have drunk freely, an inferior one. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this as the beginning of his signs at Cana in Galilee, and so revealed his glory, and his disciples began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. We welcome all to our historic Cathedral Basilica, and in a particular way, we welcome those who are visiting with us from other places, other parishes, other cities, other communities, and even other countries. And we invite those who are visiting with us to just stand for a few seconds that we might give you a, a warm and loving welcome. All of our visitors, don't, we won't bite you. I guarantee we won't bite you. It's great to have you here. At the end of the Mass, uh, Father Jason, who has just taken up residence with us uh, and is helping out in the nursing home ministry uh, with uh, Father Joe, uh, that uh, he will give a blessing uh, to all of our, along with myself and Flint and everybody else, to all the visitors and to all those who will be traveling. Okay? Uh, I asked Father to, to be the main celebrant uh, because I was preaching anyway this weekend at all the masses and uh, I already had a funeral. So I said, well, it's good to have the young man do some work. You know? uh, in your pews, you'll notice for visitors, there is a little, little envelope. So that envelope is just in case visitors wanna, wanna help out in the cathedral, uh, in our parish, and also that you might want to uh, become a member of the parish, or get involved in the parish. So that's an, and you can just throw that into any collection. This weekend, we're going to uh, go into our flu mode here at our parish, okay? So when I look at the Center for Disease to Control, what I find is I find that uh, Texas, while it doesn't have uh, red, it has orange. And that means that we're almost to the point of it being at epidemic level, okay? The flu. So uh, we receive the total Christ in the species of the bread, Holy Communion. That's the total Christ. Yes, it is a more fuller expression to have the blood 
but you get the body, the blood, the soul, and divinity in the host <laughs> also. Uh -huh. Okay? Back when I was growing up, only the priest <laughs> received from the cup. <laughs> Remember that? Those of you who are of ARP age, and there's a few of us here. This is the eighth time that I have preached on this gospel on a weekend in the past 23 years. Because every three years, this gospel and these readings come up in our liturgical readings. So I have done a, a number of uh, facets to that particular gospel. I have told uh, the people that have been here uh, that if you really look at the, the, the gospel, you, what you'll find is you'll find that it's being that miracle, the first miracle of Jesus is being done on the seventh day. John does it very, very uh, cleverly. And he uses seven days to get to the first of seven, seven miracles that are in the gospel. I have talked about the, why are there, there are six uh, containers, big jugs. <laughs> I've talked about why it's water at the beginning and why it's all of a sudden changed, the water changes into wine. I've talked about all that and I'm not going to repeat it. You want to know about it? I'll be glad to tell you <laughs> because it's all in here. I have studied that particular part of John's gospel in-depthly. <laughs> and so I'd love to tell you about all of it, but many of you have heard already. <laughs> what I want to focus in on today is I want to focus in on something that is that I really haven't talked about in 23 years in a more in-depth way. And what made me focus in on it was from our 62nd chapter of Isaiah, first reading, the last part of it. I'd like to focus in on the fact that God looks upon us as his beloved. In this 62nd chapter of uh, Isaiah, it is written after the people have been deported, after they have been set in to slavery and exile in the Babylonian captivity. They now have returned back to the promised land after being held captives. How did they get to be captives? They messed up themselves. <laughs> they didn't listen to God. That's how they got there, okay? As usual. <laughs> That's how we all become captives. <laughs> we just don't listen to God. And we don't trust God enough that God really does love us. And when we listen to this uh, 60 second chapter, what we hear is that God doesn't look at us as bad people, even though we do bad things, <laughs> okay? He looks as, at us not as forsaken, not as desolate, but no, he looks upon each one of us as his delight. And he says, I love you enough to marry you, to espouse you. And that is that in this 62nd chapter, right at the end of the reading. We are the beloved of God. And that's Certainly, why Jesus has chosen for his first miracle of the seven miracles that he'll do in John's gospel, 
He chooses a wedding feast to show us what true love is about. I think that most of us have been to plenty of weddings. And I think that we get caught up in, well, the bride's so beautiful, aren't they a cute couple, and da-da-da-da-da. And then we look at the vows that, that people make, you know. I, John, take you, Mary, to be my wife. I promise to be true to you in good times and bad. Yeah? Mm -hmm. We hear that pretty much. But what we don't listen to is what basically the minister who is representing the, the Christian community and taking the place of Christ asks them these questions. Have you come here freely? Freely. Have you really thought about this? Have you come now that they changed words? <laughs> the church loves to change words. <laughs> you know? The institution. <laughs> Without any coercion, that's what it says now. What it used to say is without any force. Are you coming here without any force? Will you give yourself, all of yourself, to this other person? So will you come here free, will you freely and without any force, any fear, give yourself, sacrifice yourself for this person that you want to espouse? Will you be faithful, always faithful, no matter what, to this person who you're espousing? Will you do it for the rest of your life? The rest of your life. Not part of your life, your whole life. And will you accept the responsibility of bringing life and being uh, co-authors with God of life, bringing it into this world, and not just bringing it into the world, but also making it flourish into good life and good fruit <laughs> and the values of God. In the fifth chapter of the Ephesians, we're told that's how God looks upon us. Paul says that. Paul says, God looks at us and says, I love you so much that I freely give myself to you without any strings attached. I give you myself and I will never run away from you. Even though you may run away from me, I will never run away from you. <laughs> I will always be faithful to you. You may not be faithful to me, but I'll be faithful to you. <laughs> I will sacrifice myself for you. Totally. That's what we see in Jesus. God has hopped out of heaven and he said, you know, I'm sacrificing my godliness <laughs> and coming down as the babe of Bethlehem with all the limitations of a human being and I'm not really a human being, I'm God. <laughs> but I'll take on those limitations because I love you <laughs> and I wanna live with you and I wanna show you how to live. And I'll do, I will never forsake you. 
My pledge and espousal is forever. Forever. Even if you reject me, forever I will love you. And through this love, I hope that you're going to be fruitful. Let's work together to make this world a better place. <laughs> Let's together, as espoused to one another, bring about good fruit, good life. Let's make all things new, as Jesus says. So when we take a look at the wedding feast of Cana in Galilee, the beginning of Jesus' ministry, one of the things that I want you to focus in on this year, the eighth time that I have preached on this particular gospel in 23 years here, I've preached on it many, many times, but on a weekend, I've done it, I've done it seven times, now it's eight times. And I've given all kinds of different understandings of that particular little piece of the gospel. But the one I want to leave with you is take a look at how God loves us. My goodness. To freely, without any force or any pressure, he's made us. Then he sacrifices himself for us by coming down. And by the way, he made a big sacrifice making us because we've just given God, I think, a big headache. He just goes, hey, there they go again. <laughs> you, know? you know? He sacrifices himself in making us. He sacrifices himself in coming down to reveal himself and his love to us through Jesus. He sacrifices himself on the cross. And he keeps on sacrificing himself by never, never leaving us. He has enduring love. And that love that is perpetual is so that we would get espoused to him. That we get on the same page. <laughs> and that we'd live a mystical marriage. And that we wouldn't be desolate anymore. That we wouldn't be forsaken. No, that we would be delightful as human beings, as children of God. Why? Because we're spoused by God. And God wishes to give us life and life in abundance. We are God's delight. And he takes his crown and he gives us the royal diadem. <laughs> because he says, you are my spouse and I love you beyond any words. Let us stand up to profess our faith.
the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, kingdom from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now raise all our needs and wants to God, Almighty Father. For our church, for the peace of our world, and for the unity of all God's people, we pray to the Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, suffering, poor, elderly, and unemployed, for religious liberty and for the defense of all human life, we pray to the Lord, hear our prayer. For marriages and families, especially those in distress, for vocations and true biblical stewardship, for all of our beloved dead, for Dyke Martin, and for those who grieve, we pray to the Lord, hear our prayer. For travelers, for all those being baptized, and for our own silent intentions. We pray to the Lord, hear our prayer. God, Almighty Father, hear these prayers we, your children, make and grant them all through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We now invite our children to bring their gifts for Jesus and place them in the basket at the foot of the altar. Also, please join in singing our offertory hymn, When Love is Found, which can be found on page number 856. Sing and be 
blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth, work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the wine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. As humble spirits and contrite heart may we be accepted by you, O Lord, our sacrifice. May your sacrifice in your sight this day be placed into your Lord our God. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sins. Thank you. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works. For you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with the thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without the end we acclaim. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 
at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Curtis our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, especially Dyke, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, her all good and holy husband Joseph, the Blessed Apostles Peter and Paul, the Martyrs, Saint Anthony, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by the divine teaching, we all dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait for the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, power, and the glory of us, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us all offer each other a side of peace. Peace be with you, sir. Peace be with you, Father and God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
We believe that the most blessed sacrament of the altar is the true and full presence of Jesus Christ, his body, blood, soul, and divinity. As Catholics who are in the state of grace come to Holy Communion, those of other faiths are also invited to approach the altar with hands over their heart and pray with the priests for the unity of all God's people. Please join in singing our communion hymn, Come to the Banquet, which can be found on page number 810. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Come to the banquet, come to the feast. Eat the bread of love. Share in the singing, share in the joy, drink the cup of love. Draw near and take the body of the Lord and drink the holy blood for you. Saved by his body, honored by his blood, with souls refreshed, we give our thanks to God. Come to the banquet, come to the feast. Cross. 
Let us pray. Pour on us the spirit of your love and in kindness make those you have nourished by this one heavenly bread, one in mind and heart, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please pray for the repose of the soul of Valerie Gradney and for the comfort of all who grieve. Kind also, uh, kindly also pray for all our priests who will be on retreat this week. On March 7th, March 10 through March 10, Teen Acts retreat registration forms are in today's bulletin. Kindly mail or bring your completed form to our office by January 31st to be included in our discernment process. Our school's Mardi Gras raffle tickets are available on our plaza today for a new Chevy Cruze car. Kindly support our Cathedral Basilica School. Our St. Joseph Day celebration will be March 19th. An important organizational meeting will be held this Tuesday in our center at 9 a.m. Many volunteers are needed to help bake cookies and to help many other ways. Tuesday is the first baking day from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. in our center. Kindly see our bulletin for more information. Tomorrow at 2 p.m. at St. Anne's Church will be our annual prayer gathering for life. Details are in today's bulletin all are encouraged to bring this to this gathering baby shower gifts for birthright of Beaumont. Our Cathedral Basilica School will have an open house next Sunday following our 10 a.m. Mass. All are encouraged to visit and tour our school. Monday is Martin Luther King Day. Our chapel and parish office will reopen on Tuesday. And I asked Father permission, and he said yes, as long as I'm brief. In today's, uh, in the bulletin, I know how, in today's bulletin is a little blurb about the celebration of marriage that we'll, uh, we'll have after uh, each of the Mass. Every year, Father invites the couples to come up, renew their vows on the weekend following Valentine's Day or before Valentine's Day. This year would like to have a wedding type reception, Valentine Day, and I'm asking that you submit your wedding photos, you know, and there's a little blurb in the, in the bulletin that addresses this, and it would be wonderful to see all these beautiful wedding photos celebrating the sacrament of marriage. So I hope you pay attention anyway. <laughs> Before leaving, kindly tidy up your pews for their next Mass. Thank you. Thank you, Father. May I now request Catherine Sarge to come forward? Catherine Sarge to accept the statue of the baby Jesus. This is being done for respect for life. Let us be people who respect and promote life. Life is the most precious gift the Lord has given us. Thank you. Thank you. God bless. So may I ask the visitors and the people who intend to travel this week to stand up for a prayer of blessing.
May God bless you, hold you and keep you. May God's mercy shine on you, guide your work and guard your resting. Keep your love forever new. Amen. Let's all stand up. The Lord be with you. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. My soul cries out with a joyful shout that the God of my heart is great, and my spirit sings of the wondrous things that you bring to the